baby. I woke up this morning, a sea was storming inside of me. And baby, I think I'm capsizing. The waves are rising and rising, rising and rising, 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 rising and rising. Greetings, ladies and gents. Welcome to OTFI and what could possibly be, because I can't prove it, the world's first ever 3D CAD build using AMD's new Zen architecture, this being the Ryzen, Ryzen. R7-1700X CPU, tested against Intel's X99 platform, that being the Xeon Broadwell E1650 V4 CPU. And if, like me, you're sick of hearing your favourite tech YouTuber bleat on about how Ryzen's is no good for gaming, but it's great as an all-rounder for workstation tasks. Well, let's put it up against the X99 platform in one of the ultimate workstation environments and settings, that being 3D CAD. Yes, indeed, let's see how it does up against Intel's own workstation platform, the Xeon. On paper, these two CPUs are very comparable. The AMD Ryzen 1700X comes in with a base clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz and a max turbo core speed of 3.8 gigahertz. It has eight cores and 16 threads. For the purposes of this test, I have provided a minimal, because that's as much as you can do, overclock to the Ryzen 1700X and forced all cores to a speed of 3.9 gigahertz using the Windows High Performance Power Plant as well to lock all cores into that frequency. The Intel Xeon 1650 V4 CPU comes in with a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 4 gigahertz. It has six cores and 12 threads as opposed to Ryzen's eight cores and 16 threads. However, that Intel 1650 V4 CPU with its four gigahertz turbo frequency is a little bit of a misrepresentation. Yes, one core can turbo to four gigahertz, but it does so very, very rarely. And most of the time, the 1650 V4 will sit at a frequency of 3.8 gigahertz, whereas the Ryzen chip throughout this test was sitting at a frequency of 3.9 gigahertz. So they are indeed very comparable, bar that 100 megahertz frequency difference and two cores overall throughout the duration of the test. The overall system specs for the Ryzen system, it was housed within the Thermaltake core v21 ugly micro atx chassis it is obviously the amd ryzen 1700x cpu ram 16 gig of ddr4 which is 3000 megahertz out of the box however when i first booted up the ryzen system it for some reason underclocked itself to 2133 megahertz i've overclocked even though it's still an underclock overclock the memory to 2666 megahertz the video card in the amd system is the amd fire pro workstation card the w9 100 with 16 gig of onboard vram and the storage device is the intel 600p that being the 128 gig variant m.2 pci express nvme solid state drive the overall system specs of the Intel Xeon workstation are it is an HP Z440 workstation on the X99 platform. It is the 1650 V4 CPU as stated before, 6 cores, 12 threads, and a turbo clock of 4 GHz, mostly running at 3.8 GHz. It has 32 GB of DDR4 2400 MHz ECC RAM. The video card is the Nvidia Quadro M4000 with 8 GB of onboard VRAM and the hard disk. The hard disk I need to have a little bit of a word with you about that. The hard disk forced me to split the test into three segments. Out of the box, the HP Z440 came with HP's own, what they call Z Turbo Drive, which is essentially their own proprietary PCI Express board with the Samsung SM951 512GB M.2 drive soldered on top of it. However, with that drive in the HP workstation and Windows 7 installed, I performed the 23 point stress test and the results were horrifyingly bad. So what I did as a means of elimination was I took out the HP Z turbo drive and stuck in my crucial BX200 SATA solid state drive, the 256 gig solid state drive, put on Windows 10 and re-ran the 23 point stress test and the results were dramatically different. That could be down to a number of factors but I'll talk about that after I've shown you the results. So I'm gonna have three tests. We're gonna have the Ryzen. Right. 
an R700X build, and then two tests from the HP Z440 workstation. One with the turbo drive in on Windows 7, the second with a SATA solid state drive in with Windows 10 installed. So without any further ado, they say that Ryzen is a great all-rounder when it comes to workstation tasks. Well, let's put it head to head against what is now the industry standard in workstation platforms, the Xeon CPU, and see how Ryzen does at one of the ultimate in demanding workstation settings. 3D CAD, is it gonna be a case of Ryzen can compete at this level, or is it another case of making more excuses as to why AMD still haven't quite got it right and they're not up to the job? Let's have a look. All right then, so let's talk about the results, shall we? The focus of this test from the very start was always supposed to be how Ryzen was gonna perform on 3D card, not even necessarily against the X99 platform, but it just happened to be up against the X99 platform in this video. But for me, one of the most interesting things to come out of this test wasn't how Ryzen performed, it was actually the disparity between the DHP-Z workstation running Windows 7 or running Windows 10. The only difference in hardware between the two HP results is the hard disk. That's the only physical component that changed. And on paper, the crucial SATA solid state drive that was in the Z440 should have performed worse than the Z turbo drive, which was running Windows 7. On paper, the crucial solid state drive is worse at every performance metric when it comes to hard drive testing than the HP Z turbo drive, which was the one with Windows 7 on. So that doesn't make sense to me. However, there were a lot of software differences between the two builds, and that was completely unavoidable. It's perhaps a test that I can do in the future, but there were quite a few substantial software differences between those two HP systems that were tested. So the major one was one had Windows 7 and one had Windows 10. The Windows 7 system, and there's nothing I could have done about this, was set up to be used on a domain. It had been added to a corporate domain and therefore it had received group policy from the domain. And there's nothing I can do about that. I can't wipe that for the purposes of this test. However, after speaking to the IT team, they're not aware of any group policy enforcements that they've applied down, which would affect 
the performance in 3D CAD. Why would they? This PC is supposed to be used with 3D CAD, so they're not aware of anything via group policy on the domain that would cause this kind of slowdown. And although that Windows 7 PC has been set up to be used on a domain, it is a completely fresh build. It's never been distributed to a user. It's had no previous software installed. It's had no user usage on it. It's a fresh build ready to be distributed to a user. So it is, for all intents and purposes, a pretty clean build. The only other piece of software on that Windows 7 system which could impact the results is that it's using the Microsoft Endpoint Security Service, which is Microsoft's own antivirus and firewall solution. But to be honest, looking at the results, some of those results being 40, 50, sometimes over 100% slower than the Windows 10 system, I would be very surprised and also very concerned if Microsoft's Endpoint solution was causing that kind of a slowdown within a business critical application like 3D Card. I would understand it to some extent if that slowdown was limited to file access transactions, things like opening files, saving files, exporting files, importing files. But this, the difference in performance extended even as far as FEA meshing and shape description whereby there are no large bulk file transactions whereby antivirus or a firewall or any kind of security solution could interject and interfere with the performance so that doesn't make any sense to me either so over and above that there's nothing really that I can think of between the two systems other than the operating system which has caused that such massive disparity between Windows 7 and Windows 10 and because of that because the Windows 7 system does have a few anomalies like it is on a domain some things are beyond my control and I can't get it to exactly the same platform as all other tests I'm going to not necessarily disregard the Windows 7 results but we're going to use the Windows 10 results as being the metric for the HP Z440 system but also do keep in mind the Windows 7 results because they did happen they were real I validated them four or five times across different days so they are a thing but I'm going to go with the Windows 10 results as being gospel for the Z440 so what about those Ryzen results then? Well, there's going to be no pleasing everybody with this one. There's going to be some people that say, well, the cost between the two processes is completely different. Therefore, it's not apples to apples. There's going to be some people that say, well, the core count is different. So it's not apples to apples. So you can't please everybody. Unfortunately, I'm not the kind of channel whereby I can just go out and buy every Xeon and then test it against every Ryzen. And I can't pick up the phone to Intel either and ask them to send over an exact equivalent chip to the Ryzen that I'm testing today. Just can't do that. And I do believe when it comes to single threaded workflows, which is what the majority of Autodesk Inventor is, it's based on single threaded workflows. I think these two are pretty comparable. You've got Ryzen locked in at 3.9 and you've got the Intel between 3.8 and 4 gigahertz, mostly sitting around 3.8 to 3.9. So you've seen the bar charts, you've seen the results. How do you think they fared? Personally, I thought the Ryzen performed distinctly average. There isn't that much of a gap between the cost of these two CPUs. The, the price is going to change based on where you live and what time you're watching this video. But currently, as of today, the Intel Xeon CPU, buying it as a standalone CPU, costs around about 600 English pounds, whereas the 1700x is approximately 400 English pounds so it is a little bit cheaper but that's just for the CPU you've also got to think about the cost of the motherboard the RAM all the other components that make up that particular ecosystem so there is no there, there is no identical comparison between both systems AMD to Intel yes you can spec up something which on paper in terms of specs is pretty similar but then there's going to be a massive cost disparity between the two systems which is always going to leave an opening for somebody somewhere to say that's different therefore that's better if you then spec an equivalent system for AMD and Intel which comes in at exactly the same cost you're gonna have spec differences which will leave someone saying well that's different so your tests invalid you can't win so in my opinion when it comes to something like 3d CAD performance is more important than cost so I'm gonna be basing this on specs I'm gonna be focusing on specs rather than cost and in terms of specs these two CPUs are as close as that I can personally get to CPUs into my office on the test bench for testing. Now I know I'm waffling on a little bit here but I do need to cover all the points that I do know will get brought up by somebody at some point in the future so I'm just going to take a look at the two system specs just to clarify a couple of points which will be brought up. Someone might say that the AMD Ryzen system only had 16 gig of RAM whereas the Xeon system had 32 gig of RAM. Please note that none of these tests, none of my 23 point stress tests exceeded 16 gig of RAM. In fact they didn't even exceed 12 gig of RAM so there was no memory bottlenecks occurring throughout any of the tests. 
For the GPU, the AMD system had the Workstation Class Fire Pro W9100 card in, whereas the Z440 had the Quadro M4000 in. These two cards aren't really comparable either. However, all in, the AMD Fire Pro W9100 is a more powerful card on paper than the Quadro M4000. None of these tests really utilize the graphics card either, and that's not just because the test's poorly designed, that's just because this application, Autodesk Inventor, just does not use any GPU acceleration. It doesn't offload any workload to the GPU, even in the FPS tests that is mostly all carried out by the CPU. So all in, taking everything into account that was seen in the tests, looking at the results of the Ryzen system going through the 23 point stress test versus the Xeon system going through the stress test, it's time to draw up some conclusions. And it's a difficult one. It is a difficult one because they're not the same architecture and they're not the same price point. That this is the same problem as people are having when they're comparing Ryzen against Intel's KB Lake 7700K in the likes of gaming metrics. With 3D CAD, if it was me and my money, or my recommendation for somebody buying a system for an office, I would always say pay that little bit extra if you're gonna get the performance out of it because in business, performance equals productivity productivity equals profit. So you want to spend that little bit extra. What's $200? What's $400 on top of a single system that you're going to keep for five to 10 years if that's going to yield massive productivity benefits whilst you're working over the course of those five to 10 years? So all in, I'd say that the Ryzen system, looking at these results, is performing admirably in some tests whilst not so good in others. And when I say not so good in others, I mean in some of the tests where I would have expected it to have performed a little bit better. It falls short of the Xeon, bearing in mind the Xeon and the Ryzen have got similar clock speeds in this test. It's falling short of the Xeon in some of the tests which were single threaded and also the multi-threaded tests as well where Inventor uses multi-threaded workflows for short bursts. The Ryzen was falling short, but not by massive margins. Some tests, yes, there were quite some considerable gaps between the Intel system finishing the test and the Ryzen system finishing the test. But then in some tests it was fine, in some tests it was just okay. So what I would say in conclusion is that Ryzen isn't the best for 3D CAD. It's not the best at this particular workstation setting. The Xeon is clearly still the winner. However, I wouldn't recommend not getting a Ryzen system. It's not terrible. It's just not great. So that's an objective overlook at the results. A subjective look at these results, which would be my opinion, uh, purely on the Ryzen CPU and the Zen architecture so far from what we've seen, is that it's, in my view, a complete and utter disappointment. It really, really is a disappointment. And this is entirely my opinion. Basically, in my view, AMD have had a number of years to observe Intel's dominance of the market. They've had a number of years to observe what Intel have been doing, the technology that Intel have been putting out. And they've had a substantial amount of time working behind the scenes with X amount of engineers, X amount of man hours to get something to the market that's going to beat what Intel are doing. Intel have been accused of complacency. They've been accused of stagnating. AMD have had the chance over the last few years to develop something which straight out of the door, pound for pound, pummels Intel into the ground. Why release something that's just good enough? Why release something that competes? If Intel really are stagnating, if Intel really are being complacent with their technology, well then surely there's room there for AMD to come straight out the door and release something which there is no compromise. Just release something that's better. Why does the world, the world doesn't need something that's just as good? at a cheaper price point, the world was ready for something that's better. Because there's a lot of people out there, especially in the professional market, who will pay, they will pay money for something that's better, and they'll pay more for it. And when you're releasing a chip like Ryzen, which is supposed to be competing with the x99 platform at those, quote, productivity tasks, or for workstation or professional use, why release something that simply competes in some areas and falls short in others? You've had a ridiculous amount of time to get some to the market that will wipe the floor with Intel and it's just not happened. So all in, yes, it's good news that AMD do have an offering that at a certain price point competes with Intel, but from my personal point of view, that's not good enough for me. I wanted something that exceeded what Intel are doing 
and if that means paying more for it then I was happy to do so but it's still not necessarily a bad thing for the market in general it's not a bad thing for competition in general that AMD do have a competing product it's just from my point of view I'm just disappointed that AMD after all of these years in development after all the hype they've only released something that is indeed just competitive and by the looks of it taking all other online reviewer benchmarks into consideration it would appear that the only area that the Ryzen CPU is competitive in is full all cores to the max workflows and up being up against one of the x99 i7s that being the 6900k that seems to be the only CPU that the Ryzen is actually competitive with and it's only competitive at a select few workflows where all cores are maxed out balls to the wall going nuts also with synthetic benchmarks as this tests proven 3d card which is a true professional workstation workflow Ryzen is not better than an equivalent Xeon it's just okay it's just all right and a little bit cheaper it'll do the job but it's not outstanding so that'll do it for now putting Ryzen through the TFI 23 point stress test for Autodesk Inventor would I recommend anybody do a Ryzen build for 3d CAD Autodesk Inventor absolutely not I'm afraid the eight cores on Ryzen as shown in this test don't make any difference whatsoever unless they're all maxed out 100% performing a task for a long period of time that's no good for most people when it comes to 3d CAD we need single threaded performance performance at short bursts, multi-threaded performance in short bursts and Ryzen just cannot keep up with Intel's offerings when it comes to those kind of workflows. At the moment, as it would appear, the 4790K, which is in my TFI rig, is top of this stack when it comes to the performance benchmark. When I do eventually get around to testing it, it will be inevitable that the 6700K or the 7700K will be a much better proposition at a much better price point when it comes to building a PC for 3D CAD. If you're looking for a proper full thoroughbred workstation for 3D CAD from the likes of Dell or HP, then you're probably wanting to be looking at the Xeon 1630 V4 or the 16. 50 v4 as tested in this benchmark so guys thanks very much hope that was useful hope that give you a bit of an insight into how ryzen does on 3d card it's okay it's not great i'll see you in the next one toodles